Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next edition of Bob CADCAM's webinar series. Today's topic is what's new in V30 2D milling. Uh, in today's webinar, you'll learn about all the new features we've added to the V30 for 2D milling operations and how to use them. Well, at least most of the new features. As you know, my name is Al DePaulo. I'm the voice of the Bobcat After Dark video series. You can find me on Instagram at Al DePaulo or hashtag Bobcat After Dark. Uh, what are you going to learn today? Well, we're going to take some time to go through the new selection manager. Uh, we're also going to talk about drill optimization choices, different changes we've made for optimizing drilling. Uh, we'll talk about minimum, uh, minimizing retracts, you know, how you can control retracts for profiles, and also trimming, trimming and extending toolpath, okay? Now, when it comes to the new feature geometry picking manager, uh, it's really changed the workflow that you'll use for any geometry selection, similar to what we've done with the CAD, but we've also added that to the CAM, so you have a a preview that you can turn on or off. You'll have a list of all your selected geometry, uh, which you can delete uh, out of the list. You'll have all your profile chains that you can change your start direction. Uh, and you'll also be able to set your top and bottom of job uh, right through the feature geometry picking manager. Now, the other thing we're going to look at is drill optimization. I'll go through a couple of different examples of some of the differences we've done with drill optimization and explain uh, when the best time to use them are and, and what they mean. Uh, so we'll go su through some drilling uh, examples. Uh, the other thing we're going to look at, like I said, is minimizing retracts. Uh, we'll talk about closed and open profiles and the option to link with a rapid. Uh, the final thing we'll review is extend and trim toolpath, uh, how you can extend and trim your, your open profiles. Uh, this is great for chamfering or corner rounding where you come up into shoulders and things like that. And as always with Bobcad, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. All right, so give me just a second to get my screen set up. Now, while I'm doing that, uh, why don't we get a quick shout out? Uh, just, uh, just let me know where you're from so I can see where everybody is uh, joining from, uh, joining with us uh, here today. Uh, so, just in the question area, if you can just say where you're at. Like David's from New Jersey. Thank you so much for showing up. Mark from Illinois. Dustin from Colorado. Uh, Michael from uh, Dayton. Uh, we got New York. California, South Dakota, thank you everybody for coming. Anthony from uh, Massachusetts, uh, we got Europe here, Romania, San Diego, so a little bit of everything. Switzerland, thank you Dirk for showing up, and Douglas, I really appreciate everybody taking some time out of your day to join me for today's webinar. All right, now, like we talked about last week, uh, if you are on Facebook, there is a Bobcat After Dark Facebook group. There's a number of different uh, Facebook groups popping up in different areas. Uh, so definitely search that. That's a great place to connect with like-minded users and get a lot of information. Now, before we get started here, I just have a couple of more questions for you guys. Um, I'm just curious of what version you're running. If you're running Bobcat version 17, just go ahead and type that in there. If you're running 24 or version 28, if you are not currently a Bobcad uh, user, uh, just write in what software you are using, uh, just so we get an idea of what you guys are using. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about, today's webinar is about 2D machining, probably the most common thing you'll find in any shop, uh, whether it's drilling, pocketing, profiling, whatever it is. I want to know what is your favorite feature, Bill? What's your favorite feature? You know, when it comes to 2D machining, what is that one feature? Hey, Richard, nice to see you in here. Um, what is that one feature, your go-to feature, something you use all the time? Maybe it's rest machining. Maybe it's, uh, you know, just engraving, whatever it is. Just, just write in what, thank you, John. Uh, just write in what your favorite 2D feature is if you have one. And I'll give that just a second. And then while I'm waiting for some of that, thank you for your reply, Anthony. Um, thank you, John. Thank you, Dustin. Chuck, that's a great point. Absolutely, David. George, very good. Um, 
if there are any specific favorite feature, go ahead and write that in. And then the other thing is, is if there is a feature you would like to see added for 2D machining, uh, just go ahead and write that, that in, whatever it might be, if it's part of the tool path or part of the workflow or selection process, whatever it may be, uh, anything that you would like to see added for 2D milling, go ahead and write that in the question area. That'd be great. And then let me see. The last question that I have for you guys has more to do with the geometry you work with. Are you guys, uh, what's more common uh, for your shop? Is it more common for you to work off of wireframe profiles uh, or is it more common for you to work off of solid models? Whichever one. You could say wireframe. If wireframe's more common, uh, you could say solid models if solid models are more common. Okay? All right, great. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Getting lots of really good feedback there. Now. In this example that I'm starting off with, uh, we're gonna what we're gonna talk about is the the feature geometry picking manager, uh, or the selection manager. Uh, this is the new workflow that you're gonna see throughout the software for selection. Um, in this example, I did draw this as a wireframe profile. I also modeled it in 3D. Um, I do find if you're drawing from print, a lot of times it's a lot faster to draw with wireframe and then just set your depths, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree with me on that. Now, if you're importing a solid, you know, some of the steps like an open pocket, you might need to draw a boundary on the outside, um, but I also like working off of solids too. So if I'm drawing it from scratch, a lot of times I like wireframe, but if I'm working with a model, a lot of times I would like the model, model as well. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, selection manager here. Okay, so you know, the selection manager, when you go to select your geometry, whether this is when you're in the toolpath wizard or whether it's in your tree, um, this is the new dialogue that you're going to see here. So feature geometry picking manager, you'll see there's a preview option, there's selected geometry, there's profile chains, there's pick top or enter top, pick bottom or enter bottom. So these are, you know, it's one concise workflow. In the past, you would select the geometry and then finish edi editing your settings in the wizard, and then you'd go back and change, you know, your direction and cut and things like that. So let's look at this. Um, selected geometry. This section here is going to show a list of all the selected geometry, and you can add and remove it. So if I just window pick everything, what you're going to see is all of that geometry is listed here. If I go... Um, over any item I could exit out so I could remove lines okay um, you can also you know if you want to remove lines you can um, deselect from the CAD window too and that will drop it from the list okay so you can either remove it from the list here or you can move it from the list uh, just by selecting it on your screen okay so that's the first group is your selected geometry uh, the second group this is gonna list out all your profile chains okay so any chains that you have it's gonna have them listed out here and then you have some options to either reverse them all or reverse a single and we'll talk about that some more uh, the next option we have here is the feature programming uh, this will allow you to uh, type in a top of job setting uh, and a depth of cut setting, okay, so you can type that in, um, or you could pick from top and pick off the model, or pick from bottom and pick off the model, or the wireframe, okay, so those are, those are the features that we have in here in the new selection uh, manager, okay, or feature geometry picking or selection manager. You know, the other thing that I want to talk about here is this preview. I personally really like the preview. Uh, you can turn it off if you don't want to look at the preview or you can turn the preview on. I find that when you have the preview on, it makes it a lot easier to see what you've selected and what you're working with, okay? So let me go ahead and cancel out of this for a second, and we'll start over. All right, so select the geometry, all right? So when we look at this, we're gonna go right-click, reselect, okay? And we can pick some profiles here, okay? So you can see these profiles our, uh, or the geometry we've selected is in the selection, uh, select the geometry window. Now, if you want to remove one of these, you can go over any individual one and exit out, and you'll see that it removes from the list, okay? Or the other thing you can do is you can just say uh, delete all, and they'll all go away, all right? So a little more interactive, um, George, had, do, uh, George had a question, do you pick 
uh, line to make chains and then can you pick features? Okay, so I, I think you're talking about some of the selection and, and I'm going to go through that, okay? Um, so a chain select, as we all know, is a shift left click is uh, a way for you to get a chain. Um, you know, let me delete all of this. You can click through your geometry one by one if you want to do it that way. Uh, if you're working with wireframe, right? So you can shift click or you can uh, click them one through uh, one by one, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do is if you're working off a solid, and this is one of the tips that I have for you guys, is, uh, you know, it's a feature that's been in the software for a while, but if you go over any edge, you can right click and choose constant Z, and then what that will do is select all the way around uh, the constant Z area, okay? Let me, let me try that again. Constant Z, and there you go. You can see it selected all the way around. Now, the other way you can do it is with a loop. So if you right-click on the edge and you choose loop, uh, it will actually give you two different choices. You just need to make sure that you pick on the choice uh, that represents your profile chain. Okay, so those are uh, different ways of working off of surfaces, uh, solid edges, or wireframe. All right, so let's see here. So, okay, so we're going to delete again. I'm going to just go back to my wireframe. I'll go back to a top view. So whatever geometry you select, whether you window pick or whether you single pick or chain pick or select off of surface edges, it's all going to be populated in selected geometry, okay? Now, inside of this window, when you've selected geometry, you do have the ability to go through here and delete geometry out of the list, okay? So you can click on an arc and delete it, um, or you can add it back in, but you can also do it graphically as well. So you can click on these um, and have them removed from the list, okay? If you want to get rid of everything, you can just clear it and then it all goes away. All right. Another very important thing to know is that, generally speaking, when you window pick, your inside shapes go the correct direction, and your outside uh, shapes generally are the ones that you have to flop. So again, with the, the feature geometry picking manager, the idea is to really simplify this process. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to select these again. Let me just pick these two, okay, because one of the things that you can do while you have your chains in here is you can go in here and you can change their direction. Now, you can either choose them all and have them flip direction, or you can go to, to the individual ones and then be able to swap them one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So you can go to this one, okay, that's cutting in the right direction. This one, I want to swap it, okay? So that's another feature of the new selection manager, Okay, so you can do reverse by single or you can do reverse by all. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about here is actually the depth settings. Okay, so again, you can type in what your uh, top of job is here. So you can set where the top of job is uh, or you can actually pick it off the model. Okay, if you pick it off the model, any edge that you grab, it's going to end up finding an end point and that point is going to be used to describe the top of job. Okay, now you can either enter the top of job or pick the top of job. The other thing you can do too is you can either enter the depth or what you can do is you can pick the depth. And again, if you pick a surface edge, it will find an end point and then it will use that point. You can see it's using this point here and you can see it's using that point there. Those are the points that it's using to describe uh, those positions, okay? So again, these are the, the main features of the geometry picking manager. Again, it's one uh, smooth workflow. Let me let me start from from a uh, from the wizard here. So we'll do two axis, select geometry. This is the picking manager that you're going to see. So you'll see you'll get into this right away. All right, all right. Now again, the tip that I have for you guys here for selection when working with solids is when you're working with solids. Uh, you know you can right click on an edge and choose constant Z or you can right click on the edge and use loop. Okay, so if you're not, if you haven't tried that, uh, definitely go through it. And again, when you're dealing with loops, if you right click and you choose loop, don't click the same edge that you clicked, pick the loop that represents where you want 
that geometry to be selected. Okay, so we can pick this side. And another thing that's very important to know as well is whether you pick a loop or a constant Z, you can also remove from that selection too. So sometimes it's really quick for you to grab a constant Z and then remove some of the geometry versus trying to pick around it. All right? Okay. Is there any questions about that before I move on to the next topic? Nobody? Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you, Oliver. All right, so let's look at the next thing. The next thing that I'm going to talk about here is the machine sequence, all right? So, and this has to do with drilling, so let me open up our next file. Okay, so what I have is I just have a, a grid of holes here. Now, the drilling optimization that we've done uh, is for standard drilling, multi-axis drilling, and cross-drilling, okay? Uh, it's going to optimize the sorting order for, you know, 2D milling, 3D milling, 4-axis milling and turning, uh, and 5-axis. So it applies to all of those types of applications. Today we're talking about just uh, 2D milling, okay? So when we're in here, let's go ahead and get into this feature, and we're going to go to machine sequence. There's three different groups that we want to look at. We want to look at the sort order. Uh, this is used to control the order holes are drilled in. So the, when you're sorting your drilling, it's so that you can control the order the holes are drilled in. Uh, the next group that we have here is the start location. This is used to control which corner you want the first hole to be drilled. Okay, so it will start from there and then it will sort from there. Okay, the next thing that we're looking at here is pattern. This is whether you're going to cut in a single direction or whether you're going to cut bi-directional. Okay, so these are, we, we have our sort order, we have our start location, and we have our pattern. Now, in, in this example, let's close this for a second. We're looking at a grid. This is really common. Um, when you're dealing with grid patterns, uh, really, X direction or Y direction are going to be your most common uh, features that we have for sorting or really what uh, X and Y was designed for. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my geometry to reselect. Uh, in this example, I'm going to pull up the wireframe. Now I can window pick here and grab the wireframe, but a quick tip, if you use the pick and match function, you can use pick and match by radius. You can select one of the radiuses and it will find all the other radiuses that are that size. Okay, so just a little tip for you. Uh, if you haven't used that feature before, that's a very useful way to select holes that are, are the same size. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, click OK on that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do here is edit this feature and we'll go to the machine sequence. Now, again, there's a couple of options here, closest, pick order, X direction, Y direction, custom direction, and optimize. For a grid pattern, the best, your best options here are going to be either X direction or Y direction. Okay, so I'll do X direction first and recompute. You know, and what you're going to see here is you're going to see the sorting that's happening. It's, it's running along the X direction. It's going to go from one hole to the next hole. Okay, and right now we have it set to a single direction. So it wraps back to the start, and then it runs down the line again, and then wraps back to the first row and runs, runs down the line. Okay, so that is single direction. We're going to come in here under sequence, and we'll make it zigzag, and then we'll recompute. All right, in this example, when it's doing a zigzag cut, you can see it runs down the line and then works its way over. Okay, so this is a, a, a nice optimized path for a grid. Uh, some of the things that we would look at here is we could either optimize this along X or we could optimize it along Y. We'll go ahead and recompute that, and you'll see it just changes the, the direction in which it works across. All right, so you can see it's doing a really nice job of picking this up. And away we go. All right. Now, the other thing that we want to look at here is uh, when we get into our sequence, so we have X and we have Y, we have single direction, we have bi-directional. The other thing that is important is this start corner. Okay. So what this start corner does is it says the first hole that is drilled. So if I wanted it, the one in the top right corner, I could pick that and then recompute. Uh, that means it's going to start in that hole over in the corner, and then it's going to work its way across the line. All right. If I change this and I go to machine sequence, 
and I say I want it to start in the left corner, bottom left, and I recompute, you know, now you're going to see that it's going to start in that bottom left. So that's what the purpose of the start uh, corner location is, and then you can use the appropriate X or Y in order to sort those holes. Now, another thing that we did add to uh, your sequencing, you know, I have two different uh, drills. I spot drill, and then I come back and drill. If we go back into this dialog under sequence, you will see this reverse uh, each operation, which means it'll work from one side to the other, and then it will work from the other side back, okay? So this way, if you have a really long part, you don't want to have it to, you know, start in this corner and then work its way all the way over here, change the tool, and start back in this corner. You want it to work its way back. So if we look at that, you can see this one starts in this hole over here, and if you look at this one here, you can see this one ends in that hole over there. So it will go in reverse order. All right? Okay, very good. Any questions about that? Uh, please show pick order. Is pick order available for milled holes? Okay. So uh, pick order, th that's a great question, Chuck. Let's start with uh, the drilling first, and then we'll get into the milling later. Um, so we have X and we have Y, we have reverse direction, uh, and we have zigzag, okay? So again, when you're dealing with a grid like this, uh, your X or Y direction are gonna be your most common. Uh, you do also have a custom direction as well. So if you wanna describe an angle, you would have the ability to, to describe that angle uh, for uh, the pattern to be created on. Now, what I wanna talk about next is really closest and optimized, okay? So closest versus optimized. What is what is the difference between these two, okay? So closest is going to find the, the closest, uh, well, it's going to run math and do an algorithm to find uh, the closest hole-to-hole -hole location. So it looks hole-to-hole, hole-to-hole, -hole, hole -hole, and uh, a lot of times that will work uh, really well. Um, you know, because it's just looking at hole to hole. Sometimes the patterns you get don't look as optimized, uh, but that's the, the sort order is just to find the closest distance between hole to hole. So what's the difference between closest and optimized, okay? Uh, does anybody know? Can anybody guess? All right, I'll keep it simple. The difference between closest and optimized is optimized actually runs through uh, the X orientation, the Y orientation, the closest, and one additional algorithm to find, it, to calculate its best shortest path overall, okay? So closest a lot of times will work. Um, optimize is going to run through X, Y, and closest and find uh, its, uh, and one other algorithm to find the closest path overall, okay? And then so that's really the difference there. So sometimes you may choose a closest and you may choose an optimized and you may ask yourself, well, why do they look the same? The closest could have been uh, the shortest path that it could find, okay? Um, okay, yeah, Chuck, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get to your cut order question, no problem. All right, so then the last one that we have here is pick order, okay? So what pick order is used is it you know, it allows you to graphically pick the order in which you're going to drill in. So we can go pick order, and then from here, uh, we really like, we just start etcher sketching a cut order, and as we run across these holes here, you know, this is going to change the order in which those holes are drilled in, you know? And if we grab just uh, a group of them, I found that... Uh, you know, it will honor that group selection and then go back to the sorting uh, that you may have used previously. So that's uh, actually a really good feature. A lot of times, uh, really, pick order is designed for to manually control the drilling order. So you have optimization along X, along Y, a user to find, closest distance between holes, optimization of all of those and one other algorithm, and then if push comes to shove and you need to pick the order, you can do pick order, you hover over each hole and it will cut in that order, all right? Now, there's one other topic that I wanted to touch on here that's really important. I get this question a lot, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. Uh, if you're in this feature, a lot of times if you're in multi-setups, uh, you may need to copy and paste 
a feature from one setup to another setup. And the common complaint is when they copy and then they paste that feature, the depth values for it that would be set either here or here do not carry with that feature. Okay, so that's one of the one of the big uh, big complaints that users have. The key to this, guys, and it's really simple, is you have to uncheck use cutting conditions and enter your values prior to copying and pasting or saving that feature. And if you do that, your your whole depths will come across with that feature. Okay, so if you're, there's taps or spots or counter bores, common holes that you guys drill, you need to uncheck use cutting conditions and then those depths will come over. Okay, so just a quick tip for you guys um, that I think is definitely uh, very useful and warranted. Okay, all right, so uh, is there any other questions about the drill optimization? I'm just going to open up another file here. Let me uh, go to number three. You know, this is... Uh, just a, another example, so I have a solid here, and I have my uh, hole locations. We're going to do drill hole, select geometry, okay? I'm going to do a, a pick and match by radius, grab my radius. I'm going to space bar to lock it in, okay? Uh, next, through my selection, my machining strategy, I'm just going to make it a hole, okay? My machining sequence, I'm going to use optimize. I will compute and then we'll see that we get this optimized path for the tool to follow along. Okay, so you can see how the tool will, um, will follow along in this path. And this is an example where if we switch this up and we say, okay, machine sequence, and we say closest, we actually don't see a difference in the path, and that's because the closest was actually the most optimized path. When, when we evaluated it and returned it, what we got from closest was better than what we had had in the other, um, other algorithms, okay? So, all right, let's see here. There's another question. What are the two operations, center drill, drill? Center drill rather. Um, David, basically I'm, you know, I'm spotting the hole and then I'm coming back and drilling it. You know, when I spot this hole, I can either do that with a center drill or if you go into your uh, tool library, there should be a bunch of standard spot drills set up in there for you too. So I spot the hole and then I drill the hole. Okay. All right. So hopefully that cleared that up. All right. So I might as well take a moment. Uh, you know, what we're talking about here is uh, pick order control for uh, milling. Chuck had a question about uh, milling holes. Um, you know, so basically what I have is I have a set of uh, pockets that I have over here. We can do mill two axis, select geometry, you know, and what I'm going to do is this one, this one, this one, you know, and then I'll skip one and this one and then that one. Okay, so what I've done is I've done a, a unique order. Um, from here, those that will be all fine, and that will be fine as well. We're going to go ahead and choose OK. All right, we're going to just do like a profile rough here. We'll come through and we'll look at our sequence. So we'll say no sorting and recompute. And then if we look at the order in which it cuts it in, it's just going to cut in the order that I had selected it in. Are you seeing this, uh, Chuck? We go to no sorting here, you can see the order that it cuts in is the order that I selected it in. Does that make sense, Chuck? Perfect, okay, cool. All right, so that's what you're looking at there. Now, at the same time, let me go back and edit this. This is a decent segue into, let's see, let's go closest, recompute, all right. So let me blank this guy out. The next thing that I really wanted to talk about, really wanted to talk about was minimize retracts. This one, um, minimize retract is used to keep your tool down for profile cutting between depths of cut, okay? So let me, um, let me blank this guy out here. So we'll go ahead and blank this out. Very good, Richard. Nice little feature there, right? All right, so we'll go to this guy. Uh, we changed the, the sorting order so it's closest now. All right, let's say we're roughing this out. So we're going to do uh, parameters. Now, minimize retract is used to keep the tool down for profile cutting between depths of cut. Where you're, where you're going to find this option is under the parameters uh, section and then depth. When we go to multi-depth, you know, we can set a, 
a value here, and this is where you'll see it. You'll see minimize uh, retrack. Okay, so we can turn that on, and then we're going to go ahead and compute this. All right, so what this basically does is as the tool goes around, it's going to go around the cut. Instead of it going back up the clearance, it's just going to stay down. So you can go around, go around, go around, and then it will finally come back up and out. And then it will move to this next section and go around and around and around. At this time, this feature is available for uh, profiles. Okay, so you can use this for your profile milling. Uh, it is supported for open. I uh, end close profile. So we'll do another section here. Let me compute this, you know, and we can back plot this and you can see how the tool will stay down uh, as it goes around these routines. The tool will stay down instead of going back up the clearance. Okay. So that is, um, that's an example of a, a closed shape here. Uh, again, minimize retracts. You're going to find it under the parameters section. And then when you're in your depth options, you're going to see minimize retracts, all right? So that's an example of a closed profile. I want to do an open profile now, so let me open up another part here. So we'll go to uh, this one here. All right, so this is just another example. We have an open profile here. What we want to do is come in here and profile these walls. Uh, the geometry that I have selected is this section here, okay? And then we can come in and uh, choose our back plot. And what you're going to see right now is as this connects, it's actually wrapping over to the start and works its way around and rapids over. Okay, so instead of it going up to clearance, it's going to stay down. Now, you don't have to run a rapid. I'm, I know a lot of people uh, would prefer it not to um, just stay down. Uh, or I'm sorry, just to rapid. So you can come in here uh, while it's down into the part. Usually you don't like it to rapid. If it's an open area, it'll be fine. Um, if you choose, if you uncheck link with rapid and recompute, uh, you'll see that that's just a feed move to work its way over. Okay, Dirk had a question here. Uh, at close profile, does it work with lead in and lead out? Or does it just go down? Um, yep, it's going to work with your lead in and lead out. Let me... Uh, let me go back to this guy here. Let's go to a uh, top view. Uh, control one is a top view. Control two is a front view. It's just some hotkeys. I'll see if I can't email everybody. I did a hotkey list. If you're not using hotkeys or setting hotkeys, I think um, you guys are missing out a little bit. Let me go ahead and uh, modify my location here. Let's go with like a blended lead and we'll recompute. So here you can see we have our lead in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, back plot around this and uh, let's kind of zoom in and you'll see how it goes down as well. So whether you're using a lead in or not, uh, that will work. Okay, cool. Um, Raymond had a question, how do we select where the pocket mill start point is? Okay, I'll get to that in just a second. Um, I want to get through the other topics here, but as far as uh, where the tool entry point is for a pocket, you can pick a point. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, any chance of getting 2D adaptive strategy feature like the ones you're showing right now? Um, as far as the tool staying down, I'll address that as well in just a second. Okay, Dustin? All right. Very good. So we have uh, Keep Down works on open and closed profiles. It works with your lead in as well. Uh, if we get over here, if you have an open profile, you can link with a feed move, or if you want that to be a rapid move, you can come in here and go to your parameters and minimize retracts, and then you can link with rapid and then compute, and then you'll see it will rapid across in that section. All right, so we have uh, closed profile, open profile, and link with rapid. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, trim and extend of toolpath. In this example, I'm going to use um, extend, okay? So why is it cutting counterclockwise? It's Brack Tools. Um, uh, why is it? I mean, it can cut either way that you want. So if this is uh, an outside shape, I would to climb mill, I would want it to cut in this direction. But if I wanted it to conventional, I could have it go the other way. So 
hopefully that makes clockwise is better. Okay, well you can cut clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever way uh, it makes most sense. I don't, I don't know if I have that switched up or not, but thank you. Thank you. You can, uh, if you need to change the direction, you can reverse it, recompute. Um, you know, if you're going to be on this side of cut, you would have to switch your comp as well. So you can come in here and make it a right uh, comp, and then you can have it going in that direction. Okay? So you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, the system is set up for climb milling by default. Uh, so if you are going to conventional mill, uh, you're going to find that you're going to want to switch your parameter from system comp uh, left to system comp right. Okay? All right, so all right, so back to extend and trimming of your uh, profiles. Okay, so this again is for uh, profiling. Uh, this is for open shapes. So you can use extend and trim on open shapes. Uh, if you look at the geometry I selected, uh, let's go ahead and go to our top view here. This is the geometry that I selected for this. Now. Trimming and, and extending, I mean, it works either way. Let's, let's find out where it is. So you're going to edit your feature here, and it's one of the feature options. Okay, so it's feature parameters, and you can just check this to turn it on or off. Okay, now you can have it, um, when you do this, you can either enter a distance here um, by percentage or by a distance, okay? So you can use either value. Either you could say 75% of the cutter is what that would be, or you could uh, input, just by clicking the percentage, you can input a value, you know, how much you want it to be, a half inch, quarter inch, or whatever. Uh, if you want it to be extending, it's a positive move. If you want it to be trimming, it's a negative move, okay? So you can go either way. You can go positive or you can go negative, um, and that's just by entering a value here. So minus 0.5 or 0.5 is the difference of positive and negative. Now, you can also set uh, the same as start or you can make it different. Um, you know, in this case, I'm going to enter a value, let's say one inch, same as start, and I'll recompute. And what you'll see is it extends the toolpath out. Uh, extends the toolpath out. Now, the other thing that's um, really important with this as well is that you still have your lead-in option. Okay, so if you want to change your lead-in, you still have access to all your lead-in parameters that you would normally use, but it gives you the ability to extend the toolpath. Um, off the selected geometry or trim it back from the selected geometry, okay? So, um, all right, so that's kind of a segue into that. This is for extend. I'm sure I could come up with other examples where extend um, would really be a good option. I'm sure Bill understands when you work with solids uh, and you're trying to machine your part, the wireframe that you get uh, doesn't always extend out as far as you want. Having the ability to extend it out further and use your lead-in uh, is very useful, and that's what you're going to see there. Uh, can you use this on a solid? Yes, you can use this on a, a solid, okay? So if I was on a, a solid here, you know, and uh, let me remove and reselect. Let me just pick one of these edges. We'll say okay. I can compute that, and it's going to work uh, on a solid, or it's going to work on... Um, on wireframe, either way, okay? So you can work on surface edges or you could work on wireframe. So that was a good question. Uh, Mike, Mizell, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, Reyes, Mizell, Michael, is that how you say it? I don't know. All right, very good. So let me go to the, the next example here. So let me uh, open up the next one. All right, so this is, uh, this is an example here where, you know, where I see this probably being the most useful is when you're trying to break edges uh, that are running up into a boss or a shoulder or something like that and you really don't have room, uh, what, this is where you're going to trim it back. So in this example, I'm doing an edge break here. Uh, this is the geometry that I selected. Uh, great segue, I should have just went to the next model. <laughs> uh, so this is the geometry that I selected. Uh, this is the toolpath that I'm getting here. Um, what we're going to see is this toolpath, uh, the way that it's created because I'm driving um, the tool off the, uh, the edge of the model is I'm going to get a gouge right here. You can see how it runs right into the model. The way 
the way that I check for this, guys, is I, I change the, I usually like the tool to be shaded, but if you go transparent, if the two intersect, you'll see the color change at the intersection point. So it makes it really easy to see what's going on. Okay, so again, this is a case where I want to I want to break this edge, but I want to keep away from that wall. Uh, we can come in here. We're going to go extension. We're going to enter a percentage. So I'm saying more than 75% of the cutter. Um, you know, I'm saying 75% of the cutter uh, away from the edge. I recompute. You know, and now you're going to see. Um, the uh, the tool path here and it's not going to be colliding with the model okay so here you see that now another thing that I want to touch on I mean uh, these are the main topics that I wanted to cover here today so I think I've done a decent job for it I know that the next webinar we're going to get into there's a uh, adaptive facing there's multi um, uh, there's roughing for chamfers, which is another really useful feature. Uh, but the other thing that we're going to do is get into this toolpath editor. And I, I just want to touch on it a little bit. Um, while we're here, I'll just give a, an example of it. There's eight different ways that you guys can use uh, the toolpath editor. Once I explain this, I'll go back to open questions. Um, one of them is the ability to modify your toolpath. Okay, so I'm going to edit this feature here. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to edit the operation. So I go to the operation and I go to edit toolpath. This is the toolpath editor. There, like I said, there's eight different things that you can do in here with this toolpath editor. The first thing I'm going to do is just select um, select this line right here, this rapid line. Okay. Uh, once I have it selected, I'm going to say move and uh, I'm going to set it to drag. And this gives me the ability to just drag. Uh, that rapid up uh, so that it clears that area. I'll say execute and OK. And this was a, a quick and easy way just to change that rapid in that section. Now, of course, I could have gone through the dialog and changed it as well. Um, but sometimes you'll have multiple profiles. And if you change it for all, it's not as optimized as if you would change it for one. So that's a little teaser for what you can do with the, the toolpath editor. Uh, like I said, there's eight different examples there. So we'll go through that some more. Um, in the next webinar. Now, Chuck did have a question. We cut fiber, climb milling. Yeah, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, Chuck. Uh, depending on the tooling, you know, spiral up, spiral down, you know, does it chip? You know, there's uh, there's a lot of different um, uh, valid processes people use in manufacturing. And I'm not here to tell you which one works best for you, uh, just to show you uh, the different ways that you can use Bobcat, and then you can apply it for what works best in your shop. Um, Dirk had a question. Do you recalculate the toolpath edit? Uh, no, you just do an execute. So like in this case, I've edited the toolpath and you can see that it's locked down. Okay. If I were to unlock it and recompute it, then it would go away. So this is one of the reasons why we give you the ability to lock toolpaths now. Uh, you can go over any toolpath and generally like in this case I have, um, let's see, I have like a uh, and uh, open pocket, right? Now that's a profile. Where, where is it? Inside, uh, face drill, let's see here, profile. Where's my open pocket? I think I have this one. Okay, here it is. No, nope, that's a profile. Uh, these are some spiral pockets. Okay, so I don't, I don't know why I can't find it right now, but you could you could go over anyone here, right click, and you could lock that down. So that way, if you recompute, you don't recompute that particular feature. This one here, if I come in and I edit this toolpath, let me go back to this one here. If I come in and I edit it, you know, I can still go in and modify. I can add to the modification, right? If I unlock it and then I recompute, then that modification will be gone. So hopefully that made sense. Um, all right, very good. All right, so those are the topics that I had to cover here today. I got some open questions for you. Let's see, there was one that came in uh, about the pocket. Let's see here. Again, I want to thank everybody for showing up here today. Uh, what do we got? Okay, how to pick a, a pocket start point. All right, so... You know, when you're doing an offset or uh, offset in, offset out, or a zigzag pocket, if you want to pick a pocket start point, I'm going to just uh, sketch a point on my screen here. That's going to represent like a pilot hole or where I want to drill from. Uh, let's see here. Let's find uh, inside pocket. 
no, that's not, that's an open, uh, let's, here we go, here is inside pocket. Okay, so right now the tool's starting over here. If I wanted it to start from this point here, what I would do is pick my plunge point. You'll see this right here, plunge point, right click, reselect, pick that point. And then when I recompute from there, you'll see the tool will start at that plunge point and then work its way over. So hopefully that answered your uh, question there. Let's see who that was. Yeah, David. David, does that make sense for you? Okay. Uh, let's see. There's a question. Is the editor within V30 or is it an add-on? Great question, Chuck. The editor is, is um, a feature of version 30. I believe you need... Uh, mill standard or greater uh, in order to get the uh, editor. I don't believe it comes with Express, but I'd have to check on that. Okay, so yeah, if you're a version 30 uh, editor, uh, version 30 user, you can use the toolpath editor, mill standard, and greater. So that's three, four, and five axis you can use the editor. Um, Dylan had a question, what toolpath are you using for the spiral toolpath? Um, that's a great question. Um, we actually have a, a pocket feature that is a spiral toolpath. This is a real spiral. All right, so here we can see, uh, you know, if, let me look at it from a top view. You can see we're getting an actual spiral. This was something that we had added recently. Um, I think 29 added it. Uh, so it used to do a step over, now you get a true sp spiral. Um, it only works for circles, so if we right click and edit this, you can go to your patterns and you'll do an offset pocket and then right here, use spiral for circular uh, pockets. So that will give you a spiral. Um, can you do a spiral entry around that point? Um, let's see here, okay, so this is going back to the inside pocket, I believe. Let's go to this one here. So right now we have this, uh, this entry point as a plunge point. So another thing that I didn't touch on, you will notice throughout version 30, when you're plunging, anytime you do a plunge point, you do have the option for a peck cycle to peck the tool to get down in there. So just a, just a new feature that they added in here, uh, so you can peck versus a single depth. If you do, let's say, a spiral at that uh, plunge point, let's go ahead and recompute you know, you'll see that we get a spiral at that plunge point as well. So hopefully that answered your question there. Uh, spiral is the same as helical ramp. Uh, yes, if we turn all of these off and we just go to this one and turn this one on and post it, you will see this is helical, uh, you know, it's a helical spiral to get down into the part. Um, can you do a spiral entry around that point? I believe I answered that, Richard. Is there the way to do helical all the way down instead of multiple steps? Um, there's some tolerances within this uh, as far as like how many turns that it makes. I don't believe you'll get um, a full 360. There, you, there may be some uh, limitations in the, the posting engine. Most machines don't like a full 360 helix, or I shouldn't say most machines, some machines. Uh, so you'll have to get with the posting department to get a confirmation on that. But I believe it will uh, break it up into uh, some form of your uh, your uh, your circular motion, whether it's quarterly or half. I think um, maybe 180 is probably the greatest that you can get. All right, we got about 10 minutes left. Is there anything else anybody wanted to cover? Let's see. Uh, was a question, let's see, can your arc lead in to start and finish a cut? Can you, can your arc lead in to, to start and finish a cut? Uh, on a profile, George, yeah, you can use a lead in and lead out. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. All right, so I got about uh, 10 minutes left. I might as well go through a, a little bit of this file here. This is, um, uh, a job that I kind of just mocked up the other day uh, just to kind of show off some of the different uh, features in the software. Again, my wireframe geometry was, um, you know, just a couple of different shapes that you see here. I did model it up as a solid so you can see uh, the solid. This is my CAD tree. I did, you know, an extrusion, extrude boss, extrude cut, some fillets. Uh, an extrude cut, an extrude cut, a solid, 
and then uh, I started to do uh, some soft jaws, but I didn't have that here. Yeah, you're welcome, Bill. Very good. Thanks for showing up. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of this section here. Uh, if we go through the cam tree, I mean, I did do a facing routine. Uh, new to the version 30 is adaptive facing. So uh, we've had zigzag, um, you know, single direction. Now you do have an adaptive facing cycle that you can work your way in and out. So that's a great way to do it. Um, yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Michael. Yeah, I'm gonna send a. I'm gonna send the hotkey document out in the follow-up email. So it's got a bunch of basic hotkeys and the selection stuff. I definitely recommend uh, you print that out so you have it. Uh, very good, George, to see you uh, see you here today. All right, so we have the adaptive facing. Uh, Chuck, thank you. Yeah, really, I really appreciate you spending some time with us here today. Uh, so we have our adaptive facing. Uh, we have our drilling, so I drill like a pilot hole. I come in here, I do my spiral pocketing. I uh, finish profile, then I do my outside work. I just do a profile rough, a profile finish. Uh, I have my inside pocket here. I did adaptive roughing to clear that shoulder there. Uh, then I come in and do a, a profile finish around these edges to put a, a radius on the wall. Uh, let's see, this is the other pocket to get down to the bottom, you know, and then we do our chamfer mill on that edge. Uh, chamfer mill on those edges and then one more on uh, let's see this section here and again this is where we're using our trim and extend to come in there and do that yep thank you John thank you for showing up again uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run this back to back um, you know as some of you may or may not know there's a, a hurricane coming close to Florida we're in Florida we're in Tampa Bay uh, it looks like it may go up the other coast but uh, depending on what happens with that will determine uh, whether we run another webinar uh, next Wednesday. I think we will run it back to back. We'll probably post it up. Uh, as long as nothing crazy happens, we should see you then. Uh, again, if you guys have any uh, additional questions or comments about 2D machining, go ahead and fire it away uh, now. Um, you know, we got about six minutes left uh, before the webinar ends. So open questions, whatever you guys got, sounds great. But yeah, we, we will run uh, an invite to the next one. Uh, next one, we're, we're going to get into probably some of the, the face milling, the chamfer roughing, a few other odds and ends that I may have missed on uh, the 2D milling, and then uh, tr uh, get into that uh, toolpath editor. Again, eight features in the toolpath editor. You guys are really going to like that. Um, yeah, we'll start it. We'll, we'll we'll do our best. I mean, so far we look good, but we'll see we'll see how it goes. Again, thank you, Richard, uh, for showing up. Richard White, I appreciate you spending some time with us here today, John. Uh, yeah, we'll be safe. I mean, you know, the projections are interesting, but uh, I'm sure that it'll be pretty good. Rob, thank you so much. Uh, yes, we will email out the hotkey list with the uh, the follow up email today, uh, so you guys will get that here shortly. Um, George had a question. Question: How do you change the lead-in arc and angle? Um, all right, so you know if we look at uh, let's go to uh, let's go to what do we got here? I guess this one would be fine. Let's remove, reselect. Uh, let's go to a top view. We'll get rid of the solid. We'll go from here to here. All right. We'll recompute. All right, we'll come in here and edit this. So we'll turn that off. We'll look at our lead. So you have a vertical lead, you have a parallel lead, you have a right angle lead, you have a circular lead, and then you have a blended lead. Okay, so if we get into circular, you can have it either at right angle, uh, you can have it tangent. Um, or you can put it as at a user-defined angle. So let's look at right angle first. Um, this gives you that fish mouth or fish hook uh, type approach. Uh, let me just set this to one depth. Uh, let's go to parameters, single depth, compute. Okay. All right, and let me kind of get rid of our geometry here. So here you can see this is a right angle and then it comes in. I'm probably starting on the other side here. So it comes in and then it swings the radius 
Okay, if we go back to our leads, if we say tangent, and then we recompute, this will show you the sweep that we have here. Uh, so it's going to come in and work its way. Uh, the other way we can do this is let's change the sweep angle. This is just going to adjust the amount of radius that it's using. So here you can see it kind of comes in like, you know, you can kind of look at it as an angle, but it's like the portion of the radius that's there. So if we make that, um, let's go back to leads. Let's say we make this 90 and we recompute. We're using 90% here. I mean, I guess you could look at that as the angle too. Uh, if you come in here to leads and we say sweep angle and we say this is 20 and then compute, you know, so now it's coming in at a 20 degree angle and working its way in. Hopefully, um, let's see here, who was that? Uh, George, does that make sense how you can change the angle? Let me go back and do that again. We're going to edit this. We're going to go to leads. Okay, we're using circular tangent and then we're just adjusting the sweep angle 90 degrees puts it at 90 degrees if you want it at 45 degrees you could put it at 45 degrees and compute and then there you can see at 45 or 10 or whatever works so hopefully that uh, that makes sense for you uh, George if you could answer that'd be great let's see um, can you and sometimes show 3D tool path for a person face to face. Yes, if you guys have questions about the software, you'd like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, demonstration, you can call and schedule that with your account manager at any time. You can send over a part file. We'll go through it with you. Uh, it'd be great to uh, to work with you one-on-one -on -one and show you a little more about the software. David had a question. Uh, is there a webinar that shows from concept to drawing to modeling to milling? Uh, I don't know if I've done a cradle to grave um, example it's kind of a little patchy I do little pieces here or there uh, there is a cradle to grave tutorials built into the software uh, we did them a few years back if you go to help and getting started there's three different tutorials that are built in here uh, in Express which is really like 2D uh, mill standard 2D and 3D mill pro a little more complex what's really good about these is um, you click on which one you want to view Okay, then you click on this icon right here, and this has all the steps laid out for you. Um, it will launch uh, a getting started document. You can go to the tutorial. You can read through the steps. Uh, it's got uh, videos for each one, too. Maybe you don't want to read. You want to watch. There's a video uh, that goes through this. So, you know, if you guys haven't, if you're new to the software and you're trying to get familiar with some of the basics, Cradle to Grave, that would be the best option for you. Cool, just what I needed. Perfect. Yeah, actually, go through there. Uh, any feedback that you have would be great. Um, when doing multiple pocket, multiple multiple pocket, same size, I select the center plunge point for only one. Is there a way to pick them all? Um, great question. Let's find out. Uh, let's go to here. Let's go point sketch. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, not necessarily the best order, but that's okay. We'll do two axis, select geometry, boom, boom, boom. I guess you don't need the boom in there. Sorry, guys. All right, so we got all of those. Not too concerned with the depth. Uh, this is going to be pocket. I don't worry about that. We'll do finish. So when we go plunge point. We should be able to, okay, so it's only getting one. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like uh, you can only do that one pocket at a time uh, is what we're looking at there. Uh, generally, if you so what you may need to do is copy and paste your feature. Is it Larry? Yeah, Larry. Uh, it looks like it's just one at a time. Let me let me try. Let me see if it will let us pick multiples. So what I'm going to do is just change the color of them. So we'll make them a different color. We'll make them orange. All right. So then we'll do, it does say plunge point. So it looks like uh, singular. Yeah, it, it, it's made, it's set up for just a singular pocket at a time. Larry, if you have multiple pockets, what you would end up doing is picking your first one here, you know, computing that. Uh, let me remove, reselect, select just this one. 
And what you'd end up doing is just taking this feature and copy and paste, keep your depth settings, select your new geometry, and then pick your plunge point. Uh, so that way you could you could pick plunge points for multiple pockets, if that makes sense. Uh, the other thing that you uh, may do, if it's the same, if it's the same pocket like this, I would create a pattern. It's uh, it's pretty easy to create a pattern. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, really great question there. Let's see. Um, very good. Let's see, Dirk. All right, see you later, bud. Uh, thank you, John. See you next one. Uh, Larry, very good. All right, cool. Well, uh, it's 2.03. Unless there's any last questions that you guys have that you'd like me to answer, we'll go ahead and wrap up here for today. Uh, again, it's a pleasure. Let's see. Brian, can you show me the gear, how the gear feature works? Um, I can show you the defaults working. I know that's not what you're looking for. Uh, the gear feature you know, you basically are, are working with number of teeth, pressure angle, pitch, outside root, root fillet. And uh, I'm sure what you're <laughs> running into is how to enter that information uh, so that you can get the different sizes that you may want. Thank you, George. Yeah, we'll stay safe. Um, you know, I, th I think we just need to connect and give me some of the parameters that you have. And uh, let's see if we plug them in. I know they use different names like pressure and pitch. Like uh, they're, they're not necessarily uh, industry standard. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, but it, it does have to work. It does work. Uh, thank you, Richard, for showing up here today. Uh, we'll see you next time, Michael. All right. Well, you're welcome, Ben. Thank you, Ben Smith. Great to have you with us. Hope to see you in the next one. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it for today. Rack and pinion option. Um, no, I mean, you know, Anthony, if you're doing that, I would just draw a single tooth and copy it out. It's not too bad. Yeah, Richard, are you going to be at West Tech? Uh, I'm sure you're – I don't know if you're going to – I'm not – I don't think I'm going to be out there, but uh, if you're going to be uh, at West Tech, make sure you stop by the booth. I'm sure – uh, Alex will probably want to speak with you. I think Alex is going. Um, yeah, very good, Tom. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely swing by. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a day. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. We'll email you out the, the cheat sheet for your hotkeys here shortly, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks a lot.